The main sort of thrust that I want to pursue, and we're going to pursue it from the beginning of advertising all the way up to the, uh, all the, way up to the most current ads, is this idea of advertisements being next to the information, being around the information, and advertising or advertisements actually becoming the information. So you see here on the, on the two sides of the screen, one that says ads are next to the information. That's a picture of the, the front page of a newspaper. And you can see that the very top of the newspaper is reserved for the name of the newspaper. But next down in the mo next most important position on the page, right under the banner, is an advertisement. And then at the bottom of the page is an advertisement as well. Which of those advertisements do you think is worth more? Clearly the one on the top, right? So here we have sort of the, the ultimate in advertising surrounding the information. And we see this all the time on the web as well. And we'll get to the web in a little bit, right? The advertisements around the edges. And later we'll show how Google has sort of really owned that space, the advertising around the edges space. Okay, and then there's this trend for the advertising to be the information. You can see on the other side of the screen, it says this awesome Apple combo ad. And so we have the Apple banner. You can see the Apple guy up in the top. But if you look closely, what looks to be sort of an editorial stuck there right next to the um, stories on the page is who? This is the Microsoft guy, right? So this is an ad for Apple that's kind of masquerading, and in this case, not, not very convincingly masquerading, but masquerading as actual content. So we'll see those two threads happening over and over and over again throughout, um, throughout this presentation. We could begin back in the very beginning of print advertising, but I think we don't need to go any further than, um, than radio to see the first kind of interplay between this idea of is it information or is it an advertisement. So let's listen to this clip. Eversharp sponsors this program. We will now have a three-second silence in their honor. <laughs> Last week, a man made a very interesting test. <laughs> this man took a certain razor and shaved one side of his face. He took another company's razor and shaved the other side. The left side came out smooth, clean, and perfectly magnificent. The right side was rough, ragged, and completely obnoxious. Now, because of business ethics, I can't tell you which razors he used. <laughs> Okay, so you can sort of see the ambivalence, meaning the, the, the guy who's the announcer is not quite sure whether he's on the side of the advertiser or not, right? He's sort of making fun of the advertiser at the same time that he's promoting the advertiser. And so that sort of ambiguity, is this guy on the team of the advertiser or is this guy you know, on the team against the advertiser is really played out in, in that show. And the advertiser actually probably doesn't care because what the advertiser really wants is attention and they want to be associated with that radio announcer who you always, already trust and already like is a funny guy, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So there's the beginning. Now let's look at the next, um, the, the next kind of fence sitter between is this an advertising or is this content? And now we'll look at early, te early television. The Flintstones has been brought to you by Winston, America's best-selling, best-tasting filter six. It still tastes good like a cigarette should. So that's the Flintstones. They were a real popular cartoon when I was a kid. And in fact, commercials using cartoon characters to advertise cigarettes were not unusual at all when I was a kid. Today, that stuff is totally banned and you, know, um, you can't do that sort of thing. You can't advertise tobacco hardly anywhere anymore. But back in the day, there, there was tobacco advertising everywhere. So this is another example of merging the content with the advertisement. So the, the standard commercial is television, 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 commercial break, commercial break, television, 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 commercial break. But here we have the television content merging with the advertisement. Okay, so that's early television. Okay, now let's do sort of modern television, television that's around now. And the latest kind of twist in this idea of the ambiguity between um, content and advertisement comes in the idea of product placement, which has just kind of been all the rage. So let's take a look at, at some of the product placements on modern television. Love it. It's not product placement, I just like it. What? What? So is this conflict any different on the web? Obviously not, right? The same, kind of, the same kind of conflict and distinction between advertisement and content that's been playing out for a long time in other media is also going to play out exactly the same way on the web. And so let me give you sort of, 
you know, the two, two pieces of the puzzle. And let's, let's ask again, is it an ad or is it content? In this first example, let's look at a banner ad. This is a Mac banner ad. And um, the question is, is it content or is it, uh, or, is it, or is it an advertisement? Hello, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. This is a bit cramped. Very tight quarters. P728 by 90 format. It's an efficient but uncomfortable use of online media space. Feels like I'm back in my box. Well, it's only for a few seconds, PC, till we get kicked. Click now. I need to get back to work. So I think you can see that this ad is playing the margin between being content itself. You want to watch it. You want to, you know, it's cool. It's fun, <laughs> and 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 being um, and being advertisement. But it is not trying to merge with the content around it in the same way. It's still standing apart. So a classic banner ad completely stands apart. It's there on the side. It's there. On, excuse me. It's there on the top. And we have sidebar sidebar ads that are maybe related to the content, but not really trying to be the content. This one sort of, you know, plays the, plays the margin between actually being the content and being more interesting than the page that it's on. Um, now let's look at another one. Hello, I'm a Mac. Uh, here I come. Hang on. What you got there? Oh, it's this little op-ed that I wrote, hot off the presses. Okay, there we go. You see, uh, people are switching to Macs at an alarming rate. It's kind of a crisis. They're more popular than ever in homes, businesses, colleges. People need to know how much this hurts PCs. They need to know it now. So, if you'll excuse me. Wow, that's a great pose. It really captures your inner frustration. I know a lot more where that came from. How about this one? So this one clearly plays with the distinction between content and advertising, right? We have the banner ad on the top, and now what's the banner ad doing? It's talking to the it's talking to the ad on the side. The ad on the side is actually positioned as content. So it's happening on the web the same way as it's happening everywhere else. So let's summarize this idea. The idea is that um, advertisement wants your attention. Advertisement wants to convince you of something, and advertisement wants you to do something or believe something that you hadn't done or believed before. Um, and one way about that is to be associated with content. The other way about that is to become the content. And I think hopefully you've seen at this point that that dichotomy, that difference between becoming and surrounding or being surrounded by content um, is played out, has been played out throughout the history of media, is continuing to be played out on the web.